Well, that bubble was burst pretty quickly. We beat Arsenal 3-1. We're in the quarterfinal of the Carnival Cup. Everything's good. Everything's exciting. Then we draw Liverpool away. Nice one. Um, you never know. It's a one-off game. I I'm hopeful. I had a look at the fixtures. They've got Man United and Arsenal either side of our game. So, hopefully... They'll rest a few players and we can take advantage. But we'll deal with that later on. Let's talk about last night because there was two partnerships I thoroughly enjoyed. Not only did it work last night, I think it gives us something going forward. Because quite often something will happen in a game and you'll be like, well, that was nice, but it's not really something long term. Like if Kerr played right back and played well, but like he's done well there, but I'm not sure he's a long term option for that position. There's two, a defensive one and then an attacking one. So let's start with the attacking one. Caduce on the right, Jared Bowen up front. Now, sometimes in the past, you feel that Moyes has maybe stumbled upon something that has worked. And not just David Moyes, other managers. I'm pretty certain every manager at some point in their career has tried something, whether it be in training, in a friendly, in a competitive fixture, and it's worked. And it's like, oh, hello, let's stick with this until it stops working. And then they've discovered something new. But this isn't one of those things. Jared Bowen up front is something David Moyes has spoken about publicly for quite some time now, actually. Even last season, he spoke about how he would like to use Jared Bowen as a striker more. In the summer, he's very loudly said that Jared Bowen could be a striker, could play centre-forward more often. So he's always intended on using him as the main man in the middle of the pitch up front for West Ham. But the, the problem has always been, well, who takes Jared Bowen's place? Because Jared Bowen is so good on that right-hand side, it's big shoes to fill. So who's going to do it? We didn't have anyone good enough. We've not had anyone good enough. Well, we do now in Mohamed Kadus. But not only have we got somebody to replace Jared Bowen, we've got somebody to play with Jared Bowen. I thought as a partnership, there was promising signs there against Everton. I thought the link-up play between those two and Paqueta at times in the second half was good. However, I was a little bit weary because the way that Everton were playing, which was, you know, a low block, they were sitting on the edge of their 18 yarders. So Paquette, I was allowed to have loads of space and loads of time on the ball. And he was able to thread those passes into the feet of Caduce and Bowen. I thought, well, we're not always going to be allowed to do that. We're not going to be afforded that. So can we do it in a different type of game? Well, last night was a bit more counter-attacking and we did it then. I thought Caduce and Bowen's partnership was really good. I thought the link-up play was good. The understanding was good. And this is a new partnership. Now, I've always thought Caduce would do better on the right for West Ham. So it's a little bit confirmation bias, but I'm going with it. Um, and people's comeback will say he was better central for Ajax. And I agree with that. I do agree with that. He was better in the middle of the pitch for Ajax. But that's the Dutch league. This is the Premier League. And based on what I've seen from Caduce for Ajax, and a little bit for Ghana, not as much, I think he'd be better suited to playing on the right-hand side for West Ham in this league so he can get space, so he can get one-on-one -on -one with the left-back, so he can cut in on his left foot. And I felt we saw that last night. His his goal was outstanding. <clears throat> Pardon me. That first touch was incredible. Alan Smith, I mean, what a, what a bitter commentator, isn't he? He basically suggests, well, he suggested he said it, but it was a... He didn't mean it. He didn't mean that first touch. Rubbish. So that was Saka. That was Riyad Mahrez. Beyond repeat, non-stop. Incredible bit of skill from him. Really good finish as well. Happy days. But while I thought Caduceus man of match, I thought Jared Bowen was just as good. He was up for it last night. And um, and we've all seen it now, haven't we? He practically blanked Declan Rice after the game. Do you know something? Love it. Absolutely love it. I thought Edson Alvarez had a little bit of grit about him chasing Rice about the pitch quite, on quite a few occasions. He's basically just kicking people, weren't he, Alvarez, when the ball was in there. He just leaves something in on them. But I like that. If you can get away with it, which he was, I like it. But I thought Bowen was on another level last night with his work rate. He was, he was running everywhere, covering every bit of ground. I thought the pressing from the front, by the way, was really good, especially in the first half. Kedus, Bowen, Paqueta, Saeed Ben Rama. I thought the, the way we pressed Arsenal's defence was brilliant, quite often forced them into a long ball, which is not what they want to do. They want to play it through the lines. They want to build up slowly, which they started to do once the big guns came on. Once Declan came on, and listen, I thought Declan was poor when he came on for Arsenal, but there was times that he was picking the ball up, <clears throat> he was dribbling 10 yards with him, playing it. Not something Jorginho was doing or Kai Havertz were doing in the first half. But in the first half, I thought we forced Arsenal to play the way we wanted Arsenal to play. And I don't think they liked it too much, but a large part of that, was a person from the front. You know, that tackle, Jai Bowen done on Gabriel, exactly what we need. Exactly what we're missing up against Everton. S stuff like that, get the crowd going, gets the atmosphere going. You don't always have to be taking shots and 
creating chances in order to give the fans something to cheer about. And I thought Jared Bowen's tackle was superb. But really good. I say a good goal from him. I know it took a deflection, but I don't care. It's a fantastic strike from him. Um, got his goal. His delivery for the first goal was brilliant as well. So Bowen and Caduce, I thought, were really good. And it gives me hope that going forward, we can build on this. Because I've always felt if Antonio don't play, we can't play. If Antonio doesn't play for this David Moyes team, this West Ham does, doesn't play. We can't do it. We can't function without Antonio. Well, last night we did. And we have to build on that. Now, it won't work in every game. There'll be plenty of games we play where that partnership can't really do too much. And the last thing I want is to get into another Antonio situation, but with Jared Bowen. Which is if Bowen don't play up front, we're stuck. So we can't get into that. And I don't think we will. Because I think, you know, Caduce can probably do a similar role to what Jared Bowen did last night as striker. But I was really pleased with what I've seen from them. I think there's big things to come from them. And the other thing, looking at the Brentford game, uh, I'll do a little video covering the Brentford game. But spoiler, wouldn't mind seeing them up front as a two. Just if we need to. We need to change formation. Get Caduce upside along Jared Bowen. I think we'll be fine. Anyway, the second partnership I want to discuss is the centre backs. Before I do, just one point in the direction of our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Hamish Chat. You can join up from £3.60 per month, so less than a pound a week, 90p a week it costs you. And um, you can get additional content over there, including player ratings, opposition previews, Anton Ferdinand podcast, Hammerlytics, and a new Patreon podcast. We've sort of freshened up how we do the Patreon podcast over there as well. Mugger Team, myself, and Gonzo. We've got another podcast which we'll be doing all season, which is just about non-football stuff. It's a break from football. It's, we've enjoyed doing it, actually, um, because sometimes it's not the best thing in the world. West Ham, the form can be a bit poor, so it gets a bit uh, talking about it. So we are a bit talking about it. You must be a bit uh, listening about it. So um, we've got podcasts over there. But anyway, patreon.com for our chat. Links in the description below. If you fancy signing up and supporting the channel, it would mean a lot. Without patrons, we wouldn't be able to create one video every single day on each channel. It's as simple as that, really. I've got some big giveaways coming up. We've got another Conference League medal display to give away. And we've got a signed Kurt Zuma shirt. The signed Edson Alvarez shirt wasn't won last night. We've got the signed Emerson shirt. So we've got quite a few decent giveaways coming up over there. So head on over. Um, we've got a prediction competition for every single game now. And as a patron, you get to enter. If you win, you win a prize. Simple as that. Right, moving on to the centre-back partnership. I've been far from convinced this season about Zuma and Aguirre as a partnership. I think Zuma started the season really well. I think he was fantastic for the first... I don't know, eight, nine games of the season, maybe. Not Premier League. All, in all, I say in all competitions, he only plays in Premier League, didn't he? The last two games, he's been a bit ropey, Zuma. Broken Zuma looks even more broken. How that's possible, I don't know, but he does. Now, Gerrard's always got that mistake in him. We know that. It's from last season. It's nothing new. It's from last season. He's continued it, though. But I think as a pairing, they've, they've concerned me for all season, really. I've never really felt that chemistry between... No, not like what, what I feel with Bowen and Caduce. I've never really felt that togetherness with that two. Uh, I don't know why. And they've put in some good performances individually, but sometimes I've just not felt there's that understanding. And they should complement each other. They're completely different centre-backs. And what Zuma's strengths are is a girl's weaknesses and vice versa. But I was hoping to see something different last night. Now, admittedly, I would have played Keder and Mavropanos, but I'm a, I appreciate I'm sort of a bit of a Tilo Keder at centre-back fanboy. I'm one of his biggest critics at right-back, but I'm one of his biggest fans at centre-back. There's maybe something in that. So when I seen Mavropanos starting alongside a guard, I was happy with that. I thought, here we go, we're trying something different. And Zuma was out altogether, which I'm not surprised at. We, we, know, he doesn't, we, we know we can't play him twice a week, so it's fine. But I thought... I thought Mavipanos was really good last night. Really good. And I thought Aguirre was good. I thought Dinos was better. But I don't think Aguirre was that bad. I can't remember him making a glading error. He wasn't perfect. One or two iffy moments. Um, someone got in behind him in the second half, didn't they? I can't remember who it was now. And Emerson, I think it was, just booted out for a corner. But that's going to happen. When you're asked to defend for large periods of the game, your, your, your centre-backs are going to buckle at some point. you just got to make sure your keeper, your other centre-back, your left-back, whoever's next to him, is aware, is reading the game and helps him out. We did that perfectly last night. But I quite liked it. I quite liked what I seen from Mavro Panos and Aguirre. I thought passing out from the back improved a lot. We know Zuma's not the best on the ball and he can sometimes be a bit erratic. You know, there's that point against Everton in the first half. He, um, he was under no pressure just to try, to try and... 
ping a 40 yard ball over to the left hand side and went straight to I think it was Decorey and Everton broke on us and I couldn't even tell who he was trying to it was the pass was that bad I couldn't even work out who his trans uh, who his target was but Gerd's passing last night he's well he set up Caduceus goal but I thought Mavapanos is passing maybe not as adventurous maybe not as Hollywood simpler just into the feet of your centre midfielders I thought helps us helps us build up from the back and when you've got Alvarez dropping 10 15 yards in between the centre backs. He's happy to come back. He's happy to take control of the game, take responsibility. And at times when you're in possession, it's almost like a back three. We've got moving it left to right, waiting for that opening, waiting for that centre midfielder. It is difficult because Suchak doesn't always come looking for the ball. And then suddenly you're into the realms of, well, Caduce, Ben Rama and Paqueta, what are you doing about it? And they're all marked up. But they were comfortable in possession, our centre backs, especially... For large parts of the first half, we were barely seeing the ball, did we? I think the stats came up at one point about 20% possession. It felt like that. It did feel like we were struggling. So when we do get it, support it, we keep a hold of it. Even if it's just to kill momentum, slow the game down, stop Arsenal playing it, have a bit of a breather, get back into position, allow allow us to move five yards up the pitch. So your centre-backs being comfortable in possession is crucial for that. And I thought they were last night. They didn't mind passing it and retreating because quite often we start with the ball on the halfway line and a couple of minutes later Gerd was outside the 18 yarder with it but they were comfortable they were happy with it and I think with Ariola and goal they'd be even better because Fabianski is still a little bit he, does, he doesn't like it Fabianski is uncomfortable playing it sorting out from the back you've seen it with the goal kicks quite often going long and going out for throw-ins and that was a minor frustration of mine last night I thought we conceded possession from our own goal kicks a little too easily but I can't have too many complaints, can I? Anyway, the two partnerships that impressed me last night, but also, more importantly, two partnerships I think we can use going forward. We can play against Brentford, both of them. Obviously, it's a big call needed by David Moyes to drop Kurt Zuma. Last night, he wasn't dropped. He was rested, rotated, however you want to see it. Like I say, I always think it's two different things. You get away with it last night. You can say to Antonio, you can say to him, hey, you're just on the bench. I'm just trying something a little bit different. Cup game, innit? I'm just resting you. You get away with that. Saturday against Brentford, you don't. If Antonio doesn't start, he's dropped. If Zuma doesn't start, he's dropped. And this is where it's going to take big calls from David Moyes to leave two players that he's relied on for quite some time now, as well as his new club captain, to leave them out and go with what he's seen last night that started impressed and won against Arsenal. I hope he does. I liked it a lot. Anyway, I'm going to disappear. Um, we've got to go tidy up the pod. We're staying in a pod. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Those things over there, they're very nice. We've, I've never done something like that before. So the tour of Scotland has continued by sleeping in a pod last night. But we're packing up. We're heading off. Um, off to Edinburgh later today. But I'll catch up with you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on it by clicking thumbs up. Subscribe to the Hammers Chat. And if you don't mind supporting the channel... Go to patreon.com forward slash hammers chat um, from £3.60 per month. Massive help. I know you might think it's only 3 60 It doesn't make a big deal. It does. It makes a massive deal to us. So please head on over there. You get more videos in return for your pledge. So thank you very much to anybody that chooses to support us. I'll see you in a bit.